it's good to pause just right now to see what's happened during the pandemic. I think you've seen that software is just an integral part of the global economy. The past decade has been a prolific time for technology companies. In fact, we've seen six software companies file yesterday alone. Snowflake is now open for business. You see where that stock is currently, $254 a share, up 111%. The biggest IPO of this year, the fifth biggest tech IPO ever. Software is eating the world. Well, software is eating the world. Software is eating the world. Software is eating the world. Software uh, is eating the world. Software eating the world. The next decade, looking ahead, it is going to be the software decade. Hi, everyone. I'm Christian. I'm Harrison, and thank you all for joining us for Paddle Forward. Today, we're incredibly excited to talk to you about the future of SaaS and share some exciting news that we have. Now, the last nine months have been a roller coaster for all of us, but we have observed huge growth in the SaaS world. And today, we're excited to talk to you about how Paddle is helping SaaS businesses scale. We all know the future of software is SaaS, but scaling a SaaS business really isn't for the faint of heart. We're building long-term relationships with customers that we need to work hard on every day. Every single one of us has more competition than ever before, and it's costing us huge sums of money to acquire and retain customers in light of this competition. Our customers are coming from all over the world, putting huge demands on our team. And software is, each year, increasingly a regulated market. These conditions are reshaping SaaS companies forever. And we're seeing a systemic shift to a new scale-up model. Yesterday, it was all about hypergrowth at any cost. It was a land grab about chasing the customer. And essentially, a focus only on ARR growth. But today, the market has shifted. We're in the age of SaaS efficiency. The success of a SaaS company is now being measured by things like lifetime value of a customer and net dollar retention. Long-term customers with strong relationships are at the core of all successful SaaS companies today. This shift in the SaaS landscape is being talked about by VCs all over the world. And here's Joss White of Notion Capital, one of the leading B2B SaaS investors, sharing his views on the age of SaaS efficiency. So I think um, the SaaS, like like a lot of the technology industry, has been in a real frothy bull market over the last few years. Um, money's been relatively easy to raise, and uh, that's driven a, a kind of growth at all costs mentality. So companies have SaaS companies have really been focused on growth and focused on um, carving out as much market share as they can as quickly as they can. And then they'll sort of figure out the profitability of the business further down the road. Um, I think that the market was already starting to slow down in that respect. And then we've had the pandemic. And I think that that has led SaaS companies to think more about uh, what I call uh, efficient growth or measured growth. So, you know, growth is still important, but only so far as you're able to grow in, a, in an efficient way. SaaS companies invest a lot upfront to acquire customers. So um, that that model only works if they're able to actually retain and ideally grow those customers over time. So that's what makes NDR such an important metric because it nets off the revenue that you've lost from customers who are leaving uh, with the revenue that you've gained from customers' accounts which are expanding. So the net effect of that should be positive um, it should be at the very least more than 100%, but the best performing SaaS companies, their NDR is 110, 120% upward, then NDR becomes an absolutely critical metric for a SaaS company. In the age of SaaS efficiency, net dollar retention is the measure of our success. 109% net dollar retention is the new standard to hold ourselves to as SaaS company leaders. I mean, just look at the IPOs in recent years. What's true about all of these fantastic companies? They're playing by a new set of rules, a set of rules that focuses on the customer and building long-term value. They have best-in-class net dollar retention and their efficient growth is being rewarded. Snowflake, who we saw go public just a few months ago in the largest software IPO ever, had 158% NDR at IPO. Twilio had 155% NDR at IPO. Before we continue, a reminder on NDR. How we calculate NDR can be seen on screen. Ultimately, NDR is the measure of how you're performing as a business. 
It takes into account the customers you've already worked hard to acquire, your current MRR. It then measures your performance across renewals and expansion, expansion revenue to spit out your current NDR rate. But how do we reach these world-class NDR levels? It's not just about having the right product strategy or having a well-executed go-to-market strategy. CEOs have another largely undiscovered and underutilized growth lever. And that lever is revenue delivery and having a revenue delivery strategy. With the right revenue delivery infrastructure, you can respond quickly and with precision to every growth opportunity. It's revenue delivery, which is going to be the driving force behind delivering world-class net dollar retention. But there's a problem. Today's revenue delivery infrastructure is not growth ready. Let's face it. You wouldn't have a room in the back corner of your office with your servers in now that you have growth ready platforms like AWS are here for your product and engineering infrastructure. And you wouldn't run your go to market infrastructure on spreadsheets now that growth ready platforms like HubSpot are available. So why would you settle for anything less with your revenue infrastructure? Why would you put up with this chaos? Revenue delivery chaos is holding back today's SaaS businesses through, a, through your complex set of tools like payment gateways, subscription management tools, and tax platforms. And because of this, your NDR performance is suffering. You're in a constant state of firefighting when maintaining, or even worse, trying to modify the stack based on market or customer demands. You're creating silos of data with every additional tool you add. Or change that you make, this stuff gets even worse. And trying to manage all of this internally is a huge resource drain that no one on your team fully owns or even dares to touch. Worse yet for CEOs, this chaotic revenue delivery infrastructure is holding back your growth. Your inability to respond or even meet market demands means you're burning money every single day. Your inability to respond to customer needs results in money left on the table right now. And that's today. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow, it's going to take you months or quarters to respond to new growth and market opportunities. This distance between your infrastructure readiness and this huge opportunity for NDR growth is creating a responsiveness gap. If it's taking too long to experiment with a new business model, roll out a new currency or language, or enter a new market segment or geography, all of this is holding back your net dollar retention performance. We hear software companies talk about these huge challenges with revenue delivery every single day. That was both a really uh, good day, but also a very bad one. We discovered a PDF with 1,300 pages. So the good thing is we had it, uh, the definite answer how to do it, but the bad thing was, yeah, it has 1,300 1, pages. People trying to put their credit card in, it's a valid credit card, and for some reason it's getting declined, right? Yeah, I think the issue mostly is that we're not domiciled in whatever country they're in. When something declines, they don't give you a reason, it just says decline. That's actually the thing that keeps me up at night more than anything else. Like, I think some of the payments problems that we have, we'll fix them. Given the four engineers that I've got now, I could give them five years of work. I don't have to have a whole dedicated team, because that's what it takes, essentially, to, to constantly be paying attention to and optimizing an upgrade flow, downgrade flow, price pages, cancellation flows. Our accounting team is was three people a year ago and we're at a dozen now. I also don't want to figure out how to be compliant, especially since the internet has changed. We're in so many countries and there's so many markets where yes, we're like, I don't think we know what portion of that people are leaving because their credit are having problems with their credit cards. It looks like it's around 40% of the number of the 6 or 7% of the opportunities. And it's not getting easier, it's getting harder. But fear not, there is a better way. So basically, we were leading up to our launch of Framework X and also looking leading up towards our Series A round. Um, and that's when we looked to switch over to a new provider who would allow us to enable that growth uh, for the next stage of our company. So after kind of switching over to Paddle, we've gone through a lot of changes, as most companies do. Um, and Paddle has really allowed us to keep growing um, and keeping up with the demand on both our self-serve and enterprise side. So they've allowed us to make experiments easy, trying out new business models and expanding to new markets um, and with new customers. Um, and I think the biggest benefit there is they've allowed us to kind of go expand our enterprise business and keeping invoicing easy to um, not add any additional overhead on the tax and compliance side for our business. Always very interesting is um, Joanne preparing reports for us um, on a quarterly basis. Um, that contain a lot of helpful insights and help us make decisions for the next quarter. The reports um, always highlight a few um, facts and, and sometimes it's, it's aligned with things we already want to tackle um, but lack the data. 
Um, so sometimes the, pro uh, the reports just provide the data that helps us make the decision quicker. So most importantly, the pedal team has provided insight and reporting to help us better understand and minimize churn. Also, I, I would note about the customer support, which was outstanding and the customer success manager response time was extremely fast, which helped us to solve any issues regarding our billing in short amount of times. SaaS businesses require a strategic revenue delivery platform. Replacing your current revenue delivery infrastructure with an all-in-one, purpose-built for SaaS revenue delivery platform. With this, you can experiment and activate new business models instantly. You can enter new markets with ease, whether that's up market, down market, and you can compete globally. You can begin cross-selling and driving expansion revenue in one click and retain more customers at Renewal, keeping hold of the customers that you've worked so hard to gain. But what actually makes a growth-ready revenue delivery platform? Your revenue delivery platform must be able to drive net dollar retention across all three of acquisition, renewals, and expansion through a single platform. You must have all of your revenue data in one place, allowing you to make business decisions quickly and with confidence. Your revenue delivery platform must deliver world-class performance across acquisition, renewals, and expansion, all without you needing to build teams, internal expertise, or systems around this stuff. Your business is building and selling a great product, not building out revenue delivery infrastructure. You must close the responsiveness gap and be able to react to market or NDR growth opportunities instantly. Any market, any geography, any segment or business model, and be able to roll this stuff out in hours, not months. Your revenue delivery platform should allow you to compete globally from day one. Software is borderless. You need to be able to take advantage of this and compete in every market. And last but not least, your revenue delivery platform should keep you out of jail, indemnifying you against tax, data, and payment-related compliance, ensuring your business is operating with full integrity. All of these six requirements should be met by a strategic revenue delivery platform. Moving to a revenue delivery platform will stop you from burning dollars and help drive world-class net dollar retention like some of the companies we admire. Companies like PagerDuty, Twilio, AppDynamics, and so on. And now we've got some phenomenal stories about how Paddle's revenue delivery platform has helped some of our customers across acquisition, renewal, and expansion. Starting with RemoveBG. RemoveBG is the flagship product of a company called Kaleido based out of Austria. Kaleido launched RemoveBG with Paddle as their revenue delivery platform. And in 18 months, we've been on an incredible journey together. We've taken them from zero customers and zero dollars in revenue to 42,000 customers across 181 countries in just 18 months. Their ability to acquire customers globally with the governance of payments and taxes handled for them has led to this world-class customer acquisition and growth. As a company, we're partnering with Kaleido to think about revenue delivery strategically, and it's become a huge competitive advantage for them. Their ability to experiment with usage-based billing models while maintaining world-class revenue retention has been a key driver of their growth. Next, they've just launched a second product, Unscreen, cross-selling this product using our revenue delivery platform in one click, which will again allow them to grow revenue and lift NDR performance to exceptional levels. The second story we're proud of is with RenderForest. RenderForest is an all-in-one platform to create videos and graphics with over 8 million users globally. Over 300,000 new users sign up every month. From the customer who wants to create a video for their best friend's birthday, all the way through to top tier marketing agencies. To serve these different use cases from freemium, one-time, tiered subscription plans, as well as usage-based charges, subscription billing logic can become very complex. This was a struggle for RenderForest's previous provider to support reliably. And this lack of reliability meant customers weren't being charged or product access wasn't being granted. And this all led to a frustrating customer experience and rapidly increasing churn rates. Since the move to Paddle, they've been able to manage their complex billing module across the whole customer lifecycle. This enabled them to create a seamless customer experience, effortlessly having users move between plans or adding additional one-off purchases to an existing subscription. Paddle provided the necessary insights and reporting for RenderForest to better understand why their customers churn, to build on these insights and improve their retention. Our efforts in helping customers move between plans and upgrade, whilst better retaining customers has driven incredible net dollar retention performance for the business. In fact, since moving to Paddle's revenue delivery platform, 
the CEO Narek and his team are set to triple the business in size. Lastly, we have Framer. Framer is a prototyping tool based out of the Netherlands. Framer have had phenomenal success in using Paddle as their revenue delivery platform in order to compete everywhere in every segment. They utilize Paddle to sell to casual designers, design teams, and even design agencies. A key driver of their net dollar retention is expansion revenue. Designers can add paying members of their team to their existing Framer subscription in just one click. And over time, as Framer have begun working with even larger organizations, Framer have even utilized Paddle to invoice customers for their growing proportion of six-figure deals. Using a revenue delivery platform like Paddle, Framer have concurrently been able to service the individual designer with a single transaction, allow for self-serve expansion of design teams, whilst being able to invoice some of the largest organizations in the world to use their product. They've achieved all of this without any back office tech, infrastructure, or internal expertise. Instead, Framer have been able to focus on responding to customer demand and outperforming the status quo when it comes to NDR. In fact, this NDR performance has been the driving force behind the $33 million they've raised from world-class investors like Atomico and Excel since working with Paddle. So, why do these CEOs choose Paddle to drive their revenue delivery? We're the only all-in-one, purpose-built revenue delivery platform on the market for SaaS. The days of cobbling things together reactively are over. Best-in-class revenue delivery is our business, and our constant investment in infrastructure performance across all three of acquisition, renewals, and expansion will drive best-in-class NDR performance for your business. We allow you to compete without boundaries, upmarket, downmarket, any segment or geography, and we'll keep you safe throughout your growth story. With Paddle, you'll operate with full integrity, as we offer governance and indemnification against global compliance for payments, tax, and more. Paddle's revenue delivery platform is for SaaS at scale. It's unified, industrialized, and it's growth ready. And here's the product. It's a number of engines feeding a central source of data. Checkout, our automatically optimized and localized checkout solution for self-serve SaaS companies. Invoice, for SaaS companies and their sales teams to deliver compliant invoices to their largest customers. Subscribe, our recurring billing engine for all types of SaaS model. And today, we're incredibly excited to announce Comply. In addition to our all-in-one revenue delivery platform, which automatically handles all aspects of compliance for SaaS companies. From automatic calculation, collection, and remittance of sales taxes around the world, all the way through to ensuring you're up to date with the latest regulation, be it GDPR, PCI, or something new. This is all augmented by a global finance team, keeping you out of jail and optimizing payments and performance. It's also supported by a global support team offering 24 seven localized support. All of this is managed from a single dashboard supported by our revenue delivery advisors, as well as our team of revenue delivery architects who ensure you're implementing and utilizing Paddle in the right way to scale. So how will we work together? We've developed a repeatable playbook to take SaaS companies from a point of fragmented, chaotic revenue delivery infrastructure, all the way through to using a revenue delivery platform to form a coherent revenue delivery strategy. And this helps them gain a competitive edge. Now, all SaaS companies start with us at a point of fragmentation. They have a number of different tools they're cobbling together. They're working from a point of poor NDR performance. Their acquisitions aren't performing due to a lack of localized payment experience. Their renewals are subpar due to a lack of global payments infrastructure. And typically, they're working from a point of non-compliance in many of the geographies customers are purchasing from. Very quickly in adopting Paddle as their revenue delivery platform, we drive these businesses forward to a point of unification, a single platform to manage revenue delivery, massively reducing the internal overhead and need for many third-party tools. This single source of revenue data allows them to invest and respond with confidence to new opportunities. Meanwhile, we take on the full responsibility of global compliance from these businesses, allowing them to finally operate with full integrity. Next, we work to optimize NDR performance with a business. We look to roll out a number of initiatives across payment methods, currencies, languages, and more to deliver world-class conversion at the point of acquisition. Utilizing our global banking network, involuntary churn is reduced and net dollar retention dramatically improves. Finally, the businesses can respond to customer and market demands, 
open up new deals or target new types of buyer without months of burden and overhead. Finally, we begin using revenue delivery as a competitive advantage in the market, forming a collective revenue delivery strategy to drive NDR across all three of acquisition, renewal, and expansion. And we're ready to adjust, experiment, and accelerate based on the business's need. Taking sellers on this journey is the reason that we exist. Our global team get out of bed every single day to help SaaS businesses succeed. And our revenue delivery platform helps ensure these SaaS businesses can succeed based on their own merits. Each and every year, we love to partner with thousands of these SaaS companies on their revenue delivery strategy. And here's why. Hi, I'm Paula, an account manager and revenue delivery advisor at Paddle. Based on the knowledge of working with many SaaS companies all around the world every day, we help you implement a best practice integration to make sure you make the best use of our revenue delivery platform. We work with you on your goals, build out initiatives through our joint quarterly business reviews, share market specific insights, for example, how to reduce churn and highlight optimization potential to help you grow and expand internationally. My favorite part of the job is seeing the companies we're working with succeed. Hi, my name's Alan. I'm the senior solutions architect here at Paddle. As solutions architect, it's really our job to get you up and running on Paddle's revenue delivery platform smoothly. Um, at the start, our aim is to understand the complexities of your current billing stack, along with what your aims are as a business. We then produce a tailored integration guide detailing the uh, instructions along with effort estimates in terms of developer hours. Uh, during the integration itself, we're on hand to, uh, via video calls, IM, email, to help your development team navigate uh, the integration and quickly solve any unforeseen issues that might arise. After we've helped you to successfully integrate Paddle into your platform, we then move to the migration phase. Here we migrate your current customers uh, across from your legacy subscri subscription management platform uh, with zero customer disruption. Hi everyone, I'm Wahid, one of the Paddle's revenue delivery advisors based out of APAC. Super rewarding role for me as I get to work directly with the company's go-to-market strategy. Once we identify their goals, we start to tactically work on how we can help them, whether it's building out cancellation funnels, sending net dollar retention targets, or even helping them transition billing models like I've just done with a couple of companies in the last three months. Hi, I'm Yulika, VP of Customer Success at Pedal. I lead an incredible team of people who take huge pride in partnering with some of the fastest growing SaaS companies in the world, helping them meet their ambitious growth goals. Working in a close partnership with our sellers across their organizations, from CEOs through to CTOs, is at the core of what we do. We form a deep understanding of each business's go-to-market strategy and a product strategy. We then use our knowledge and insights of revenue delivery in the SaaS environment to take each company to the next level to help them succeed. Today, we're incredibly excited to announce that we've raised a new round of funding of $68 million led by FTV Capital with participation from existing investors to continue our growth and push forward towards our vision. Here's Kyle Griswold from FTV on why they invested and his views on revenue delivery. Thanks, Christian. Uh, on behalf of my firm, FTV Capital, I'm very pleased to be before you today announcing the latest growth round into the company. We actually talk to seven, 8,000 companies a year trying to find the best investment opportunities on an international basis. And Paddle is one of those companies that we uncovered uh, actually three years ago. And right off the bat, we looked at Paddle and thought that what they had created here was incredibly compelling. We actually think that when you look at where the business is going, as well as where the market is going, Paddle actually has an opportunity to create a new category around revenue delivery. There's really no one position like Paddle, both from a sophistication of technology perspective on the platform side, but also what I would say is the product vision for the next five to 10 years. So we're incredibly excited to be investing in Paddle. Um, and we've had the opportunity now to watch the company grow and evolve over the last three years. We're incredibly excited to be working with FDV to accelerate the next decade of SaaS. This is a huge endorsement of our vision and gives us the resources to build the revenue delivery platform for every SaaS company in the world. And that's Paddle the revenue delivery platform for a growth ready future. Stay safe everyone and thank you so much for joining us. Stick around next for a live Q&A with Harrison and I.
Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Paddle Forward. Really excited uh, about the news that we have today and would love to answer a bunch of your questions now. We've had a ton of really great questions coming through during the stream. Um, and I wanted to start with sort of a big discussion that's been happening around support. And with the, the $68 million um, in new funding that we're announcing today, uh, we're, we're, we'll be making a huge investment in the team. So as we've scaled, um, and if we know that support times can, can kind of lengthen as we have more and more customers, um, but we're excited to be making that investment in support so that we can get those uh, support times way, way down. Um, there were a ton of questions about new payment methods as well. Um, and we think kind of new payment methods are really, really important and critical for scaling SaaS businesses. Um, today, we support a handful of different payment methods uh, across sort of credit cards across various countries, PayPal, um, wire transfers, uh, and so on. And we'll be making a huge investment in payments in 2021 as well. Um, and I think one of the payment methods that was mentioned quite uh, frequently in, in the chat was, was cryptocurrency. Um, so we don't have any specific plans on supporting kind of specific cryptocurrency payment methods right now. Um, but we were excited with everybody else to see the the um, PayPal announcement sort of a few days ago about PayPal supporting cryptocurrency across all of their users. Um, and PayPal is a large kind of integration that we have today. So sort of all of your customers will be able to use um, kind of cryptocurrencies through PayPal to pay through um, to pay for kind of products through Paddle as well. So we're really excited about that as PayPal start to roll that out more widely um, across the kind of base of, of, of users that are using uh, PayPal. Um, we had a few questions about US and Canada tax. So I'm going to hand over to Harrison for that one. Sure. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, so we, we understand that tax is increasingly complex for, for software businesses. Uh, and we're really committed to, to taking that, that burden away from you and indemnifying you against tax risk entirely so you guys can focus on your, your product strategy, your go-to-market strategy, and working with us on, on what that revenue delivery strategy of yours needs to be. Um, so we maintain that commitment. Uh, we want to indemnify you against the increasingly complex tax environment in the US, um, and we'll absolutely be, be working towards that um, with you guys. Um, if you have any specific questions on tax or any taxable regions, um, or looking for, for any advice on how to showcase a tax inclusive or exclusive price to your customers. If you're thinking about how that impacts things like conversion on the checkout, I'd encourage you to recap, reach out to your account manager, your revenue delivery advisor, uh, or the seller support team. And I'm, I'm sure they'd be willing to give you some advice, but it's absolutely our commitment to continue um, to remove the, the complex burden that is tax compliance away from, from software sellers moving forward. Yeah, and I think building building on that uh, and kind of giving advice, I think one of the big things that we're making kind of a huge investment in over the next year is actually our revenue delivery advisory team. Um, and I think there are a handful of questions in, in the chat as well about kind of consultancy and giving advice and things like that. And what size do you have to be as a business to kind of get that advice from Paddle? What kind of really large data sets and experience help benchmark you against other companies? Um, and sort of give you kind of insights on what you can do to adjust performance. But our team is more than happy to give everybody of any size, even pre-launch, kind of advice on how to build and launch a SaaS company and how to be successful, whether it's things on pricing, go to market, uh, and, and things like that, or even down through kind of implementation. Um, sort of we're more than happy to give advice on that. So recommend that you use sort of the chat in the, the Paddle dashboard um, as well, and we can answer any questions there. Um, one big kind of theme of, of questions uh, that was coming through is around a sandbox or a test environment. Um, so we actually sort of have a sandbox environment in preview right now. Um, it's going to be launching fully next year, um, but really recommend you contact sort of either your account manager or use the chat and the paddle dashboard um, or to kind of hear more about the sandbox environment, potentially opt into the preview. We have a limited number of people that we can opt into that at any one time at the moment, but we look forward to um, deploying that more widely uh, and making kind of a sandbox environment available to everybody um, sometime early next year. Um, sort of one of the other questions that we have in here, we had one which is, what is crucial for your customer success people to succeed and how do we evolve um, and what's our plan? Uh, so I think customer success has always been a real, really kind of strong focus for us um, 
uh, at Paddle. Uh, when Harrison and I first started, um, sort of we basically had a pretty personal relationship with every customer that we had, probably for, through the first hundred or so. Um, and I think the one of the things that we've um, tried to invest in a lot, it's more difficult as we scale, but it's one of the things that we want to put a really kind of significant invest in, investment in over the next year, um, is sort of our customer success team and kind of how we can sort of really understand sort of the goals that you have around growing a SaaS business um, and find ways where we can support, whether that's us supporting through our product roadmap and the things that we build, whether that's understanding what challenges that you have as a business, whether it's things like kind of, um, kind of preventing churn or expanding into new markets or sort of whatever, um, whatever different uh, kind of strategies that you have for the year. Like I think the core to success of customer success at Paddle is us really understanding kind of what it is that you want to get out of um, kind of your business over the coming years um, and us figuring out how we can um, sort of orient the things that we're doing around that. Um, so another question that's come in recently is around affiliates um, and I guess kind of referrals for, for SaaS as well. Um, affiliates is, is something that we've experimented with in the past. And today we have sort of four or five integrations with third party um, affiliate programs. Um, and kind of all of the documentation of those integrations uh, can be found on our kind of developers website. I think it's developers.paddle.com. Um, and sort of we're interested in, in sort of exploring those and, and sort of how we can get kind of even more granular data going into those sort of third party integrations as we build out some of our APIs and webhooks and things like that. Um, so right now we're, we're leaning heavily on um, some really great kind of partners on the integration side for affiliates, uh, companies like Impact, um, Commission Junction and, and others. Um, and, and sort of we think that a lot of that um, kind of infrastructure around affiliates and how you manage affiliate fraud and, and things like that is much better handled um, by some of those professionals. Um, based on some of these questions, I'd suggest a user conference. Um, definitely something that we're planning for 2021. We actually plan on doing these paddle forward events um, kind of every quarter. So every three months, uh, we plan on doing a paddle forward event. Um, this one was obviously a little bit more about kind of the announcement that we had and, and some of our kind of positioning around revenue delivery. Um, but we're excited to use these paddle forward events in future once a quarter um, to bring kind of interesting industry insights, um, great uh, sort of like speakers, some of our customers as well, talking about um, kind of the things that they're doing to grow in SaaS, as well as kind of give you regular updates on our product and the things that we're working on and get feedback from all of you um, on what we can be building and doing to help you grow a more successful um, SaaS company. Um, just looking through the questions that are coming in thick and fast. Um, uh, so is there any public roadmap? Um, we public roadmap. We do love is so whether that's in forums like this, like a live chat, or whether that's sort of coming through to us via email or in kind of any of the kind of feedback suggestion boxes in our product, um, we read every single one, um, and we kind of plan all of that stuff into our, our product roadmap as well, um, and give you updates on kind of things as and when we uh, as and when we kind of deploy those. I think you just missed a question uh, on then um, two-factor auth question, which which could be good yeah. to address if you want me to take that one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So the, the secur security is, is super important to us and, and we understand it's important to our, our, our sellers too. Today, you obviously heard about Comply um, and, and our commitment to helping software businesses operate with, with full integrity, removing the complexities around things like tax compliance, payments and data related compliance for, for folks. So security and compliance is absolutely at, at the, the front of our minds. Um, Two-factor auth on the dashboard is definitely something we've been thinking about. Um, so I, I'd certainly recommend you reaching out to your account manager to get some specifics on um, whether you guys would be applicable for that or, or whether you can get early access to that feature if, as we're thinking about it moving forward because um, security is front of mind for us and it's definitely something we've been considering. So again, we'd, we'd encourage you to reach out there um, and I hope we can share some news on that uh, in the coming weeks. Yeah. 
And I think the, there's been a few suggestions here for kind of like a user group or LinkedIn group or, or something like that. And I think that's one of the things we're excited to, to do as well. I think we've managed to build um, sort of a community of, of thousands of, of SaaS companies who are using Paddle. Um, who are all basically kind of in it for the, the same reasons. They are interested in how they grow their business um, and how they get the most out of something like Paddle. Um, whether that's kind of, and I'm excited um, over kind of the coming months to figure out um, a way for us to um, sort of collect all of those people in one place so that they can, not only so we can help, but so you guys can help each other as well, share insights and things that are working. Um, so I think stay tuned for, for something on that, something that we're working on in the background. Um, and hopefully we'll have something to share uh, in the coming months. Um, how difficult is it for someone to move from homegrown infrastructure to paddle? Um, so I think someone has just commented easy. Um, so I, I'd like to think that's tr tr true as well. Um, but sort of we tried to make kind of implementing paddle as easy as possible. Um, so sort of whether it's through our kind of drop-in checkouts, sort of either our overlay checkout or inline checkout, our kind of webhooks that can integrate directly into our application, we try and do as much of the heavy lifting as possible. And one of the things that we've built out um, kind of over the last sort of six months or so and excited to invest in more around our kind of revenue delivery advisory team um, and our revenue delivery architecture team um, as well is sort of basically support that handholds you through a migration. So I think from a homegrown infrastructure to paddle from a technical perspective, um, kind of that's pretty simple. Um, and we have customers who have done that in a matter of hours, um, sort of as opposed to kind of weeks and months that this stuff usually takes to build out. Um, and then one of the things that we're excited to invest in from a support perspective is sort of like the handholding service um, that goes alongside that. Uh, to make sure that sort of this, what can be a pretty scary thing of moving your revenue infrastructure from one place to another goes a lot more smoothly and you have some sort of advice and support uh, on, on our side to kind of help through that. Uh, thank you for all of the congratulations messages, everyone as well. It's really, really appreciated. Um, email notifications in other languages, um, sort of, I think, so one of the big focuses for on our checkout product over the last year has been localization. So it's now available, I think 18 languages, um, sort of a plethora of different currencies, sort of and more payment methods to come. Um, so that's all available in different languages and sort of where we've seen the huge benefit that kind of localization around languages had on kind of conversion rates and things like that. So we're excited to be kind of working over the next few months on um, kind of localizing sort of the rest of the experience for buyers through Paddle as well. Uh, there's a question here about, is it possible to migrate subscriptions from a provider like Stripe? Do you wanna take that one, Harrison? Yeah, sure. So you guys heard a little bit about the, the revenue delivery architects as a, as a part of this um, presentation and announcement today. And that's exactly the, the, the role within the company who'd help you with the migration just like that. Um, so they, they'd map out what, when and, and how exactly you wanted to do that, and we'd be able to migrate those customers o over without any interruption of, of service, which is super, super critical. Um, so this is absolutely something that's possible. Um, so if you reach out to the team, I'm, I'm sure they'd, they'd love to help you um, make that happen. Yeah. process. Um, and I think actually sort of a, a lot of the time actually moving this infrastructure improves things like payment acceptance um, because you'll have a cohort of subscribers that you're moving over who are in some sort of like dunning or pale, failed payment state. And actually kind of with our kind of infrastructure or global banking infrastructure that you heard about in the presentation our investments in our managed payments product, um, we actually see sort of much higher payment acceptance rates than sort of you see on other platforms. So oftentimes you actually see sort of a decrease in churn, um, even during the migration process of moving people over to Paddle. Mm -hmm. It's a great um, example of how the industrialized infrastructure can help improve performance, right? Like we're constantly optimizing for things like payment acceptance so you guys can make more, more money and more dollars out of the, the customers you guys already have. It's a, it's a great example of that in action, mm -hmm. I think. Um, are there any plans to add more customization options to the inline checkout? Um, so that's another thing that we actually didn't get time to announce in our um, in our stream today. Um, but today is actually the launch day of a new product or a new kind of set of functionality at Paddle um, called our branded inline checkout. 
and branded inline checkout. There's sort of a blog post available now. I think somebody might be able to post a link to that in the chat for us. Um, and there's also kind of documentation examples there lets you customize almost every single aspect um, of how that kind of inline checkout looks um, from the border radius of different fields to the color of buttons, to the size of fonts, um, to how error messages display and how success messages display. Um, we've already had a customer kind of go live in a, in a pre-launch pre, pre version of that um, a few weeks ago. Um, and they've seen a, a conversion rate increase of almost 10% um, from moving from a, from the overlay checkout to the branded inline checkout in line with the kind of styling of their application. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're excited for um, customers uh, to try this, this new um, experience as well. Uh, what about payments from Paddle in several currencies, not just one? Um, so today, sort of payments into your Paddle balance happen in a, in a single currency. Um, you can change that currency between pounds, euros, and dollars at any point. Um, and the next time that you get a payout, that kind of switch over will happen. Um, we're investing a ton in a kind of managed payment infrastructure over the last, over the last um, um, sort of few months and into kind of 2021. Um, so that's definitely a recommendation sort of that we'll take under advisement and, and sort of look at how we can kind of help businesses better manage cash flow and, and things like that by uh, receiving payouts from Palo in different currencies. Um, no concrete plans on that just just yet, um, but hopefully that's something we'll be able to offer soon. Benjamin had a great question, Christian, around um, invoicing and how he'd had to offer some invoices for those who, who required bespoke pricing. Do you want me to cover some yeah, info on that? Yes, you guys heard that the great story of Framer today and how expansion revenue is a key driver behind their net dollar retention figures and how this helped them go and raise $33 million from some fantastic VCs. Um, we understand that as software companies grow through the spectrum of customers they're looking to serve and begin to move up market and service customers who are willing to pay more, quite often those companies will want to be invoiced. Um, we re really want to take more and more customers along that journey, uh, just like you've described, Benjamin, and, and also like the story we, we shared with Framer. So again, this is a core part of our product invoice, um, and you can expect work and development on that moving forward. Um, and, and hopefully we, we can meet some of your needs there. Again, if you, if you outreach to us and, and let us know explicitly what, what you're struggling with, hopefully we can be more specific, specific for you. But again, it's a real core part of what it is that we're doing. And I'm really excited to take customers along the journey of being able to service both some of those smaller customers wanting to pay via card and a single transaction all the way through to huge organizations who want a an invoice from you to purchase your product. Um, I'm sure we can meet your needs there. Yeah. Um, um, one of the one of the questions that's come in about gifting. So obviously it's coming up to Christmas and it's coming up to Black Friday and, and things like that. Um, and while we don't have anything to announce, unfortunately, on kind of gift cards and gift options, and that may be something we'll explore in the future, I did want to point everybody um, to a, a blog post that we did a little while ago that's just being posted in the chat now, which is um, a guide on how to implement gifting um, using kind of the paddle checkout. Um, so that's a guide on kind of the technical steps required to implement sort of the ability to gift something to someone else um, using paddle. So hopefully some of you uh, can utilize that to build great experiences around this Black Friday or Monday period this year as well. Um, sort of, I think there's some questions in here about the difference between overlay and inline checkout for increased conversion. Um, the team will typically kind of what we, what we tend to do when we make these recommendations is we don't try and make, make the same recommendation to every company. Um, what we typically do is look at kind of your current implementation. Um, we look at sort of similar businesses and similar um, sort of like transaction flows and how they are converting. Um, and then we try and make recommendations. Uh, and this is across the board. It's not just about checkout. We try and make recommendations based on what we actually think is going to be um, the highest converting or the most um, um, sort of performant uh, for your business. Um, but with all of these things, sort of, we do recommend kind of testing uh, these things yourself as well and collecting data. And we can help with that sort of data collection and, and benchmarking as well, um, uh, should you need it. Um, but the kind of development today with the branded inline checkout, um, we've been seeing incredible results with, with people being able to build these seamless experiences um, sort of that are incredibly uh, similar to how their application and brand looks and feels with the new branded inline checkout. 
um, sort of improvements to your affiliate functions. So we've addressed affiliates a little bit earlier. Um, we don't have any plans um, right now to uh, kind of build out affiliates on our own. Um, but we have got kind of live integrations, as we mentioned, with impacts, commission junction, and others. Um, and documentation is available um, sort of on our developer site for that. Uh, sort of, we have a question here um, about. Uh, currently, it's incredibly difficult to handle email verification KYC for students and academia on four-year discounts for universities. Do you have any plans for, for an academic discount system? Um, this is actually something that's come up a few times before. Um, today, we don't have a huge demand in terms of volume of, of academic subscriptions and, and things like that that are happening through Paddle. Um, but we'd love to kind of dig into this a little bit further and understand sort of some of the challenges that you're having uh, around kind of actually doing that verification. Um, sort of we'd love to, for you to maybe spend some time with our product team understanding so that we can understand that and see how we can help. Um, so if you could drop us sort of an email or kind of a live chat after this, um, we'd love to pick that up with you separately. I think we're just about wrapping up. Um, if there are any more questions in the next couple of minutes, sort of we're more than happy to take them um, Otherwise, we will sign off for the day. Anything to add, Harrison, to, to any other questions so far? No, I think that, that thank you all for coming. Um, all the questions are, are much appreciated. Um, continue to send those through uh, even after the event. I'm, I'm sure there'll be contact information uh, on the landing page where, where you can reach us. Um, it's great to, to celebrate this, I guess, momentous occasion with you guys. Um, and super excited for the for the next phase of phase of growth. Yeah, it's been really great having you all here. Thank you, everybody who's participated in both watching the stream, asking questions, uh, and chatting with us. Um, we're more we're really excited to be doing these more frequently as well. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel um, so you're notified of, of future um, events like this. Um, but thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, paddle forward. It's been great. Thanks, everyone.